Okay, it looks like uh, we have a large uh, group of attendees here today. I just want to welcome everybody to our virtual open house. Um, my name is Bill Burke. I'm the Vice President of Student and Academic Affairs, and I'll be moderating the session here today. Uh, we're grateful that we're able to have this open house for you uh, in the times and conditions we're in. But before we get started, I do want to go over a few housekeeping items. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available for all registered participants and available on our website and YouTube channel as well. As attendees, you all are in uh, listen only mode. So your microphone is muted, but if you notice at the bottom of your screen, whether you're on mobile or desktop, there is a question and answer button along with a raise hand and chat. We ask that you use the question and answer button throughout the entire presentation and we'll be able to have one of our Johnson College staff or faculty members answer your question at the end of every section. Um, here's a quick overview of our agenda today. We're going to have a welcome from our president and CEO, Dr. Katie Leonard, and then followed by a brief overview of the college. And we'll be hearing from the program directors of our building trades and technology division this evening, which includes our architectural drafting and design technology, carpentry and cabinet making technology, electrical construction and maintenance technology, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning technology, and building and property maintenance. We will then be hearing from different student resources that Johnson College offers, which include financial aid, academic advising, and career, career services, just to name a few. And after each section, there's gonna be a question and answer portion where the questions you submit will be answered. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to our president and CEO, Dr. Leonard. Great. Thanks so much, Bill. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our virtual open house. As Bill said, I'm Dr. Katie Leonard, President and CEO of Johnson College. Thank you all so much for joining us today for our first uh, ever virtual open house series. Uh, and how cool is it that we're able to connect like this during uh, these times? I think that this type of culture, one that troubleshoots and looks for creative solutions, is one that we built at Johnson College. We don't see problems, we see opportunities. We work to be a leader in the essential industries that are critical to the lives of every American. Our mission at Johnson College is to provide real world, hands-on learning in a caring environment and prepare graduates to enter into or advance in their careers. At Johnson College, you will, find, you will not find a more caring group of people. It started with our founder, Orlando S. Johnson, and it continues with us today. Our collective goal has always been to provide students with an education that leads to a family sustaining wage and a career to be proud of. This is more important now than ever before because industry needs us more than ever before. I'm still getting calls and emails every day from employers looking for students with the types of skills that our graduates possess. The message is clear. As a Johnson College student, you are essential to the workforce. It's the reason our infield job placement rate is so high year after year. Something that we like to say at the college is that when industry calls, we answer. And we certainly deliver by providing you, the student, live labs through the industry immersion program, a dynamic internship experience, and the exposure to industry from day one we set you up for success in your chosen field, and we help strengthen the workforce in the communities around us. Johnson College is a ready to get to work college. Our greatest strengths continue to be our size, the speed at which we get students into the workplace, and our reputation for producing the best technicians and technologists around. We are the leaders in hands-on education committed to fulfilling our mission to our students. Nothing deters us from this. And that is what makes Johnson College and our students the essential and powerful part of the workforce. Together, we will continue to demonstrate just how we work. I hope you'll join us for the journey. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Leonard. Um, now I'd like to introduce Alex Ellsworth, our Assistant Director of Enrollment, to give a brief overview of Johnson College. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Dr. Katie. We appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everyone. As Bill said, uh, my name is Alex Ellsworth. I'm the Assistant Director of Enrollment here at Johnson College. Uh, before we kind of dive into everything programmatically, um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a brief overview uh, regarding Johnson College. 
Just some uh, reasons why students choose Johnson College. We have uh, 15 associate degree programs here, three academic certificate programs, so they're one year programs. Uh, with small class sizes. So throughout this presentation, you're gonna hear us mention, you know, personalized attention a lot, um, caring faculty and staff. So we're a really small institution. We have about 450 students. And our goal is for students and their instructors to know each other on a first name basis. Ed Johnson, um, as you guys can see by that logo, we're very proud of the fact that we were named the number 10 trade school in the nation by Forbes magazine. So um, school in Northeastern Pennsylvania named number 10. We're getting very excited about that. And uh, one of the reasons we felt as though, you know, we were worthy of that is uh, our 86% in field job placement rate. So at Johnson, when we start the uh, recruitment period, you know, usually um, one of the first conversations that we have with students are, what are your goals for employment? And, um, you know, even today in this, you know, climate that we're in currently, our jobs are definitely essential careers. Then, you know, real world preparation. So the majority of our work here at Johnson College is hands-on. Again, we are a hands-on technical school um, and we have industry-driven training. So what do we mean by that? Um, all of our instructors have worked in the field, you know, in their, in their field of expertise. So they have seen what it's like outside of the classroom. And we always say that our curriculum is designed by industry for industry. So we often collaborate with local businesses, businesses in the area uh, different professionals that are in that and they kind of help us making sure that we're, you know, staying up to date on our curriculum, that if there's some type of new trend in the industry that we're incorporating that into the classroom as well. And again, we're always talking about this hands on education. We also have a strong emphasis on uh, improving the soft skills of students to increase their marketability. So again, we're very confident that our students could go out and do that technical side of things. We want to make sure that when they're going on a job interview, they know how to present themselves adequately and are able to uh, find success in that route as well. And then again, just some uh, did you know, Johnson College is actually named after our founder, uh, Orlando S. Johnson. The college has been around since 1912, so we are over 100 years old. Uh, we're a unique type of school. We're a two-year private nonprofit school, so in the greater northeastern Pennsylvania area, um, we are uh, one of the only schools that fits that bill. Good thing about that, like I mentioned, small class sizes, personalized attention, and um, you know, as far as our curriculum too, we um, are able to uh, tailor it, like I said, towards the industry. Our current accreditation is actually through an organization called ACCSC. It's the Accrediting Commission of Career Schools and Colleges, which is geared more towards that career and technical colleges. Uh, right now though, we're very proud. We're actually going through candidacy for accreditation status with Middle States Commission. Um, so we're going through the self-study period right now. Um, so hopefully everything will, uh, you know, be switching over within the coming months on that. And then our tuition, it's just under $18,000 per year. So students are billed per semester. So for the whole year, again, it would be uh, just under that $18,000 figure. And we'll get to that a little bit more. And then we also do offer student housing. Again, we'll get to that. Uh, the pricing for that is just over $7,000. So some quick did you knows. Uh, as far as today's focus, though, we are going to be touching base on our building trades and technology programs here at Johnson College, uh, architectural drafting and design, carpentry and cabinet making technology, electrical construction and maintenance, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and building and property maintenance as well. Great. So I'm gonna, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Thank Bill. you, Alex. Nope. Sure. Appreciate it. Um, definitely a great overview of Johnson College. So uh, as we'll deep, we'll deep dive into some more programs and and, and uh, departments in a little bit. But first, I'd like to introduce our architectural drafting and design technology program director, uh, Mr. John DeAngelis. Mr. D. Okay, Mr. D, the floor is yours. Hi, Bill. How are you? Doing well. Well, I'm uh, the director of the architectural drafting and design department. I've been doing it for uh, a long time. Uh, I stopped saying how long a little a couple of years ago uh, because I didn't want to sound too old, right? But, uh, you know, I've been interested in drafting and design since I was a kid. Uh, I went to uh, a two-year program just like I teach today, and I found it to be very uh, interesting. Uh, interesting enough that I'm still doing it all these years later. Uh, 
we're, we're viewing a picture of our classroom right now, and it's uh, a beautiful space. We have uh, have some things hanging on the wall, on the other wall, Bill, if you get over that way. And uh, it's student work, work that people have done in the classroom. Uh, when they get it to the point where it's pretty good, uh, we'll put it up on the wall of fame. That's what we call that, right? We have uh, excellent equipment, top of the line computers and uh, <clears throat> screens and printers and uh, overhead projectors. And we have access to all the internet stuff, uh, Google, YouTube, we, we use a lot of videos a lot of times when we're talking about building construction itself. Uh, and the one thing I'd like to note that drafting and design isn't only about drawing, which, which is an important part of it, which is the part that really got me interested when I was younger. And I always liked to draw and I was always interested in putting things down on paper. Today we do it in a lot different ways. We use a computer to draw our images. We use a printer to print them. Uh, we could email our work anywhere in the world. We could send it to uh, different states, different countries, and people that are working in the architectural engineering and construction field are doing that right now. Um, you know, with this current situation we have with the uh, coronavirus, we are working remotely. But in our field, we've been working remotely in a long time, for a long time. We, in the early days, uh, we would get drawings around a lot of times by meeting each other halfway on the Pennsylvania Turnpike or something like that. Today, we just make a PDF, we click it, we email it, and people in different parts of the world can see what we're doing, make comments on it, and send it back. So it's a very high-tech industry and uh, a very interesting industry. We are the people that uh, lead the construction team. We design the buildings, we estimate the buildings, uh, we do specifications for building products, uh, and now with our sustainability uh, interest in, in the whole world, basically, uh, we are incorporating sustainability into our products, into our energy uses, and that's going to become part of all the construction field, uh, sustainability. We also look at codes and ordinances to make sure buildings are safe. <clears throat> they are fireproof in a lot of ways, and um, that's what we do in a nutshell. We have a two-year program that uh, goes by in a flash usually. Students and graduates often comment to me that I can't believe this is over already. And uh, we say, yeah, some days feel like forever, but in general, the program goes by very, very quickly. And we have people out to work in a very short time. We work with a number of companies in the area. We, we have a list of probably 50 or 60 local companies that hire our students from the Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, uh, Hazleton, Pocono area. We employ people in architectural firms, engineering firms, construction firms, real estate firms, and we're finding new places to place people now in the manufacturing fields. Companies call us on a regular basis looking for uh, AutoCAD drafting people, designers, estimators, and just uh, what I call the soft skills of the construction industry. Is that good, Bill? Very good. Yes, very good. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask now if we have any questions for Mr. DeAngelis about the Architectural Drafting and Design Technology Program. Uh, please feel free to enter in the Q&A on the Zoom chat. In addition, we'll be definitely sharing the information of all of our program directors and panelists this afternoon, this evening with everybody. Um, this way, if you have any questions, feel free to certainly follow up. Um, we'll give it another minute just to double check to see if there are any questions. So, Mr. D, do you know what companies partic in particular have hired uh, students who've graduated from our programs with this degree? Well, Bill, the list is very long. Uh, it starts okay. with architectural firms like Burkavage Design, Highland Associates, um, 
uh, there's at least 20 of those type of firms. They do mostly architectural work. Uh, engineering companies, um, Borton Lawson, places like Borton Lawson, um, manufacturing companies like uh, Gentex. And it, it's hard for me to take a ride through the valley here or <laughs> the township or the city without saying, you know, we built that or we helped with that or people are hired there. And uh, we just have a very good architectural engineering and construction community in the scranton Wilkesbury area. Very healthy, uh, very strong, and they hire a lot, of, a lot of our people. And they typically look for Johnson College students. That's great. That's great. We have one more question here from Evan. What drafting computer programs are taught in the program? Yeah, that's a very good question. We use, yep. we use AutoCAD. Uh, which is our, which is a main industry drawing program. It's worldwide and uh, growing still. And uh, we use a program called Revit, which is made by the same company, but it, it's basically a three-dimensional program where you build the building inside the program. And then you could take any view that you like, floor plans, elevation views, sections, camera views, cross sections, uh, there's so many ways to view it. You could even look underneath the building if you want to. Uh, and it's uh, an amazing program wow. and it's uh, an interesting looking program and a very good way to show clients how, how their building is going to look. You could walk through it. You could make it look like a picture that was taken of it that you couldn't even tell if it was a picture or if it's a real building. It could be put yeah on the site of the building so that the real site is combined with a, a picture of the building and uh, clients can see exactly what their buildings look like before they're even built. Uh, AutoCAD is a little bit different. It's used for architecture, for engineering, for manufacturing. So it's a little bit different. It's more technical, I would say, as far as the way it looks, but both programs are very popular and very sought after by employers. Great, great. So another question, but, uh, this one from Jordan, and maybe you know, Career Services can chime in if they have uh, an answer. What's the average time a graduate obtains a position in their field after graduation? How long does it typically take, would you say? Well, I know from my standpoint, we've hired people in their first semester. We've got people hired because they were showing some progress with what they were doing. Companies were looking for people. And I have told companies, look it, I have no seniors available right now, but I have some freshmen willing to work part-time. Are you interested? And they would say, yes, we are. And I've had people that got hired in their first year, their second year. And typically most of our students are working before they graduate. Great, great. Yeah. Okay, it looks to be all of the questions. So thank you very much, Mr. DeAngelis, for talking about our architectural drafting and design program. You're welcome. And I just wanted to say that if anybody is interested in the program, it's a great field. Uh, it's a comfortable field. You work inside in the winter a lot of times uh, in the warm air of the building, and you work in the cool air of air conditioning in the summer. You do get out into the field to look at construction, solve problems, do the things that you have to do. Uh, you, there's some travel involved at times. You have to go to sites. And it's a very interesting uh, way to make a living. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Next up, I'd like to introduce our program director for our carpentry and cabinet making technology program, Mr. Todd Campbell. Mr. Campbell. Hello, Bill. How are we doing this evening? Okay. Good. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, in the carpentry and cabinet making technology, uh, again, that's a, a two-year associate degree. We uh, work together as a team, learning all the different machine processes that we are going to be doing in our shop, um, as we see the shop right now. Um, I have, uh, I'm very proud to, to say that all of our machines are up and running all the time. We do take time uh, the students, as well as uh, the, the, the team that I put together, we were constantly keeping everything maintained and running very well. Uh, anyone who's worked in a shop 
knows that uh, there can be what we call log jams if you don't have enough tools. Well, we very rarely run into that. Our shop has at least three of every tool, three table saws, three joiners, three planers. Um, so uh, the, the workflow goes uh, very, very smoothly and consistently. Um, very happy to work with all, all my students face-to-face, one-on-one. I get to know everybody. I get to know how they, uh, the projects that uh, they really enjoy. And uh, so we can, we can tailor their education around that as well. <clears throat> Uh, after, after the first year of working in the shop and getting a, a good feel for all the tools, then we start to get into the, uh, <clears throat> the, the part of the, the uh, carpentry side where we're going to be doing some framing and site layout. We'll work with transits. We'll work with laser transits. Uh, we will be doing wall systems. We'll be doing floor systems. Uh, we have all kinds of new uh, materials and technologies that are coming up and into the construction field all the time. And uh, we like to get a, a look at those and bring those in as, uh, as we find them to be uh, the useful in our, in our uh, construction. Um, typically, the, the, the people that enjoy this program are the ones who like to create, the ones who like to build. Um, you know, it's an imagination type thing in the cabinet making side, and then uh, it, it's the, uh, the building and the construction. Um, just like Mr. DeAngelis just said, uh, they get to work inside in the air conditioning. Well, we are usually outside most of the time and, uh, and working uh, building. We get the plans from them and, uh, and then we go ahead and use that as our roadmap to go ahead and put the construction together. How am I doing so far, Bill? Very good. I'm just uh, making sure to show the attendees the website information as well. Um, feel free to yep. look on your own. Take a look. Sure. Right. Yep. Um, we do have, uh, we, uh, I'm just seeing now that Mathematics for Carpenters, that's a very nice course uh, that's tailored around the, the different types of math that our carpenters will see every day. And it, uh, it's a very good, very good skill builder in the math side. And uh, quite, quite a bit of what we do has a, a basis in math measuring and angles and things along those lines. And uh, so that, that's a great course. Um, very happy with all the cabinet making courses that we've been doing. And uh, we end up doing some furniture repair that may come in. Uh, people, people bring in broken furniture, so we have to make new pieces and such. And then, uh, you know, my seniors are really, uh, really interested in the, the, the home building. We're building small houses with uh, very intricate and elaborate roof systems. I see, I see a question there. Yeah, so how much experience do you need before coming into the program? Am I at a disadvantage if I don't have any experience with woodworking? No, that's a very good question. Uh, typically, we have, uh, we have, a student uh, coming in who has zero, <clears throat> zero experience, but really wants to work with their hands, and uh, we are, we're eager to work with them. And oftentimes, they become our, our best students. Uh, they don't have any bad habits. Let's put it that way. Uh, they yeah. come in and they're, uh, and they're uh, you know, put everything you have into it, and we will definitely get you where you want to be. Great. Okay, we'll open it up for some more questions if anybody has any for Mr. Campbell and the Carpentry and Cabinet Making Technology Program. Give it a couple seconds here. All right, um, and Mr. Campbell's information will be available as well. If you do have questions about the program, feel free to check out our website or reach out to Mr. Campbell. And at this point, at this time, all right, thank you, Mr. Gabal. At this time, we're gonna introduce our program, Associate Program Director for the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Technology Program, Mr. Colin McKenna. Mr. McKenna. Thank you very much, Bill. Hi, everybody. Yes, My name is uh, Colin McKenna, and the, I'm the Associate Program Director of uh, Electrical Construction and Maintenance here at Johnson College. Um, we, uh, it's a two-year program. Uh, your first year will basically be dedicated towards residential wiring. So like I say, after your first year, you can do from the weatherhead to the ground rod, as I like to say. Here's a look at our shop here now. Uh, the portion that we're looking at here is dedicated towards our freshmen. Uh, and you can see off to the left, we have some motor control that will be utilized in your second year. Your second year is pretty much dedicated towards 
uh, commercial and industrial wiring, uh, you'll experience some PLC work, motor control, uh, conduit bending, everything of that nature. Uh, we are a heavily safety oriented business. It might be one of the most dangerous trades out there. So safety is a top concern of ours. Uh, safety first, last, and everywhere in between. Uh, here's another good look at our shop. Um, the view of our shop on the website has actually changed drastically this year. And it's actually a testament to how good our uh, freshmen and seniors are at creating and moving electronic devices. Um, I'm a graduate of 2011, as well as my uh, fellow instructor. Uh, we believe very strongly in the school, and it's an excellent program with excellent people, the whole, the whole faculty. Um, and you can go very far, and, uh, and it's, a very, it's a very niche field. Uh, we have, just from half of my graduating class in 2011, we have people working on windmills, uh, power plants, smart homes, electrical unions, uh, power distribution. So uh, the sky's the limit. This can take you far and it's, and it's hinged heavily on your motivation. So uh, if, as long as you come here on time, ready to learn, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a great time for all of us. Uh, if, there's any, if there's any questions. Colin, we actually do have a couple questions here. I'm gonna just ask, uh, again, uh, it's Alex from the uh, enrollment department here. We had a student sure. asking um, if students get small maintenance in other parts of the school as well, if they get to do maintenance, which do you know the answer for that? Unfortunately, they do not um, around the college, but more so in your lab, Colin, if you wanna kind of explain that a little bit more. Yeah, we, uh, we have a lot of projects that we do in the lab. Uh, we, if, uh, if other departments on campus need something installed, we are usually the first person to get called. Uh, we do a lot of work in the lab on campus and now off campus as well. So we have many uh, different, uh, different options for, uh, for seeing work both in a, in a lab sense and in a real world sense. Very cool, thanks Colin. Um, we've got a couple more questions here too. Um, we had another sure. student that asked about um, you know, previously someone had asked if they'd be at a disadvantage um, having no prior experience. Obviously we went over that, but if you want to reiterate a little bit as well. Yeah, um, that's actually, it, it, it sounds odd, but uh, if you're a golfing instructor, you'd be, you'd be itching to find somebody who's never swung a club because there's no bad habits. You can start fresh. And like Todd said, they often, they end up being some of the best students. So there's definitely no disadvantage there. All right, thanks Colin. Uh, another student, Sean, wanted to know if we cover any type of low voltage. Yes, we cover every spectrum of voltage from 12 volts to 480 volts, three phase. We cover it all. All right, cool. Uh, one other one too from a student, Colin, I'll, I'll kind of answer this myself as well. You're more than welcome to chime in. Chime in sure. But, uh, student want to know if they'll learn additional skills from other programs while at Johnson to help with electrical. Um, we actually do, students that are in any of the, the building and trade technology programs, um, carpentry and cabinet making, electrical construction and maintenance, and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning actually have the same first semester. So they do get some overlap in each of those three areas. So Colin, if you want to elaborate sure, on that? It's extremely valuable as an electrician to know other skills. It just makes you more valuable as an employee. Um, you will leave here being an electrician, but still, being no, still having the knowledge to stud a wall, to thread pipe, braze, solder. Like I said, if you don't use it in your day-to-day -day in your work, it's great information to know just as a homeowner. So uh, we try to make you as well-rounded as possible. And any new skill we can teach you, we try to do our best. Excellent, thank you, Mr. McKenna. And Mr. Campbell, if you were there, I do have a question for you as well. Uh, a student did have a question about the job prospects for cabinet making technology. If you could chime in with that, please. Sure. Um, there, uh, <clears throat> there are many uh, small uh, cabinet making companies that do, uh, li you know, limited production work, um, bookcases and trophy cases, those things along those lines. And then, uh, of course, there's also a, a few very large companies that uh, uh, will produce a lot of volume. A lot of these are uh, computer controlled, um, but you still need to have a, a technician who understands the pieces, the parts, and how they all go together. Um, so, uh, and, and a lot of the, the cabinet makers end up 
uh, becoming very good finish and trim carpenters as well. And so there's quite a bit of work out there for them uh, all the way down the line. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. We appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. And thank you, Mr. McKenna. Um, at no this problem. time, I'd like to... At this time, I'd like to introduce our program director for our heating, ventilation, air conditioning technology program, uh, Mr. Walter Wood, who's going to talk about our HVAC technology, as well as our one-year building and property maintenance program. Mr. Wood. How's everyone doing? Thank you very much, Bill, for the introduction. Sir. Uh, uh, I hope everyone is doing well out there. Um, as Bill stated, my name is Walter Wood. I am the HVAC program director here at Johnson College. Uh, my program is a two-year program where we start with the basic and we will work on everything in the shop from a window air conditioner up to including the walk-in cooler that we have inside the back corner. Uh, we are constantly changing uh, items around inside the shop, giving you an opportunity to work on the vast majority of every application under the sun under the HVAC umbrella. HVAC is, an, is a great field. Every building on the globe has some form of it inside it. Uh, this gives you an opportunity to travel anywhere that you'd like. Uh, equipment is constantly changing and evolving for the latest and greatest energy consumptions, as well as runtime, uh, cost to run, and, and different varieties of, of things like that. Um, the shop has changed drastically. Uh, we've added a lot of additional equipment, including additional commercial equipment and uh, two rooftop units that are wired up and ready to rock and roll. We also incorporate, as Mr. McKenna and Mr. Campbell stated, we want to make you as well of a rounded candidate as possible. The more skills that you know, the better you are for industry. So the three of us try to incorporate projects, some projects together. Uh, to allow our students to interact as well as um, be able to communicate together with, with certain projects. We're actually in the middle of working on a house in Scranton right now where each one of us are, are with our students are, are working on that house. Uh, this is a fun and evolving field. Uh, the, labor, uh, the labor board states that there's a 70,000 technician shortage Opportunities range anywhere from a service technician, maintenance mechanic, um, installer, service tech. Uh, again, the, 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 the opportunities are, are truly endless. Um, that's, that's really what I got for, uh, for HVAC. Sounds good. Sounds good. We'll, we'll see if there's any questions from the group. Um, in the meantime, feel free to you can either follow along on our website or explore on your own. All of our website program areas have a, a brief overview with uh, uh, most of them have some sort of lab uh, view. The career opportunities that, just, just to name a few within the program, uh, the program learning objectives. So what are our goals? What are our objectives of the program? What do you learn when you leave? Absolutely. And again, we start with the basic and, and we work our way up from that. So again, anyone coming into the program with, with minimal experience or, or no experience, we start with the basic and we work our way up. Um, I am also a graduate from the program. Uh, it, it's a fun and evolving field. Our students are placed everywhere under the sun. Uh, typically, I have more industry contacting me than I have students that are, uh, are, are graduating the program uh, as far as uh, a placement rate. Uh, so many opportunities Great. out there. Um, it is, it is, it, it's phenomenal. So one question here, how often do you get new equipment and how often is it upgraded? We're constantly working with different vendors. Um, uh, just this year alone, uh, if I had to put up a, 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 an amount on it, it would, I would say about $15,000 worth of donated equipment came in this year alone. Uh, again, that, that ranged in the last two years of two rooftop units that came in that, uh, that allows you the opportunity to work on a different variety of equipment. A package unit from train came in. Uh, again, as different pieces of equipment get worn out, we're gonna change that equipment out. We're gonna get the, and keep the latest and greatest technology in the program, in the shop, to give you guys every bit of opportunity to work on it and, and have a feel for it prior to you hitting, uh, hitting the market. Great. 
Thank you. So we have two more questions in here. I'm actually going to skip one before because this next one is specific to HREC, and then I'm going to come back to the other one because that'll involve, um, you know, Mr. Campbell, Mr. D, and then Mr. McKenna as well. So um, is there a state or national license that HVAC techs must obtain to start working? So in the refrigeration and air conditioning side of it, it's the EPA certification. I am a local proctor for it, so we're going to prepare you for that. Uh, and we will test for it your third semester. But that would be the EPA 608 license that allows you to purchase and work on refrigeration applications. Any piece of equipment under the sun that has refrigerant in it, you must pass one of the, those licenses. But again, we prepare you for that and we will, uh, we will ensure as long as uh, you pass the exam at the end of it, you will, will walk away with that license. Great. Um, and so this question kind of is for all the programs, but and I know everybody will be able to want to chime in with this answer and their own personal answer. So out of all the programs, what field has the most need right now for workers? <laughs> uh, again, that, that's, that's a hard <laughs> conversation. Loaded question. Every, every one of them. Yeah. Uh, they, I, all, they all have a need. Yeah, all the, tra them. the trades are uh, in very, very much uh, uh, in demand right now, uh, all across the, uh, I, I would say probably electrical and, and HVAC um, probably are uh, are growing the fastest, but uh, the carpenters and the and the builders are, are also, uh, and, and what, what's happened is a lot of the uh, older gentlemen and ladies in the field are retiring, and uh, so we need, we need fresh workers to come in and take their, take their place. Yep. I mean, if you think about it right, new construction involves every single one of these programs. So, I mean, the demand is there for everything, correct? Well, yeah, <clears throat> new construction and remodeling. Sure, yeah. Retrofitting yeah. And, uh, and all that, yeah. And with the younger yeah. generations not coming into the trades like they normally have for the past years, the demand has been higher than ever. Yep. If I could Great. say something. Um, <laughs> You know, and one of the things with drafting and design is uh, you can't really do any work without the paperwork first. So the design documents and the estimating and all the things that happen before a constru construction starts, permits, getting approval for land development, all that type of stuff has to take place before construction. So I would say it's across the board that, you know, we're gonna get busy. And another thing too, which I don't think people are really thinking about right now is that once the government uh, gets off their rear end and starts uh, passing laws for infrastructure, they're gonna be building bridges and highways and sewage treatment plants all around the country. And everybody's gonna be a part of that. Yep, definitely. Absolutely. Great. All right, well, thank you. We do have a few more questions here. So, um, and this is back to, to Mr. Wood. Would I have enough knowledge to work in the field while I'm in school? And, you know, is there a time frame? I'm sure you could probably give some examples of some of the students, so. Uh, again, uh, back to uh, Mr. DeAngelis' statement earlier. Uh, as, as some students uh, grasp the, the information quicker, uh, we have a lot of my first year students that are working in the field between their first year and their second year. Uh, again, I, I typically have more employers looking for qualified candidates than I do have candidates for to fill those needs. Um, so again, I'm, I'm offering the same thing. My first year students, uh, if the company wants to work with them and give them an opportunity to work part time. A lot of my students are working over the summer. A lot of my students are working right now uh, as, as, uh, as needed uh, individuals working in uh, and on refrigeration applications. So again, it is a, a, a constantly growing and advancing field. In the next four years, they're talking about 115,000 uh, uh, technician shortage in the field uh, throughout uh, the, the, the coverage areas. Um, it, again, it's, it's inc in, incredible, an incredible opportunity that, uh, that gives you guys the opportunity to work on, on everything under the sun under the HVAC umbrella. And uh, we have it right at our fingertips in, uh, at Johnson College. Great, thank you. And this question, um, more on the academic lines, if, if we're leaving another college but have received credits for general education courses, will those credits transfer over? And Charlie, what I would say is um, just send us your transcripts and our registrar's office will evaluate them. Um, you, you know, typically we have uh, agreements in place or already established evaluations from credits depending on where they're from and 
the overall um, need. And Aubrey, if you want anything to add on the overall transfer credit process, you know, feel free. Otherwise, yeah. Well, Bill. Right. Yeah, Mr. D. Uh, on that note, I just wanted to say that in the architectural oh. drafting department, about 75% of our students have been to another college before they came to Johnson College. So, yeah, and, 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 and that is typical for our entire population. I mean, around 40% of our students have had prior college and will certainly look at those transfer credits you know, on a course by course basis, of course. Great point, though, Mr. D. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and then this is for maybe for all for all the programs here. Um, Jordan asks, what's the male to female ratio in the classrooms? I'll take the lead with that. Uh, as far as HVAC, I have two uh, female students that are actively enrolled right now, and they are knocking it out of the park. One is working right now uh, out of a place in, in uh, Clark Summit. And, and um, uh, again, awesome opportunities for everyone. Um, Great. I, don't, I don't want anyone to think that it's the, the, the uh, man-dominated field or anything like that. We have technology that's going to lift the equipment up. We're not doing the manual labor of it. As a service technician, the last three years that I was active in the field, I'm still active, but uh, the, the, the majority of it, the heaviest thing I lifted was a laptop. So again, it really depends on the, on the avenue of what type of work you're looking to do. And again, this, this, this field will take you anywhere under the sun. Yeah, uh, all, all the young ladies in, in my program and the carpentry pr program do very well. Um, they, they, uh, they work right alongside all the guys and uh, you know they 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 put their <laughs> they put their uh, amount of work in it works out very nicely uh, absolutely probably, i probably have uh, one or two uh, girls per year uh, come in and uh, they always do very well great great um, and i will say as an institution the male to female ratio is uh, th uh, three females per ten, 3 out of 10 so 30% um, and, you know, and for, for a trade focus, we're, you know, we're, we're definitely looking to grow that because there is a lot of opportunity. Um, Tons for, of opportunity. For, Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Wood, does HVAC include plumbing courses? As a, as a student, you will learn how to solder, braze. We will do some uh, drain west, uh, waste and vent piping. Uh, you'll install your own hydronic boiler. Um, so again, we, we try to cover as much of a variety under the umbrella as possible to allow you to be an entry level technician upon completion. Um, again, we, we cover as much as possible in the, in the short two years and it, it flies. Great, great. Um, and then the last question here is, will my high school dual enrollment credits still qualify, although I've taken a year off from high school? So if you've earned college credits uh, through a dual enrollment program, uh, yeah, there, I mean, they, they would still be good. We would just need the transcripts. If they were through us, through Johnson, absolutely, um, they, they would still count, sure. All right. Uh, any other questions from the group? Great questions. Um, and I just want to thank you know, all of our, all of our program directors again for chiming in and, uh, you know, answering the questions. So now I'd, I'd like to still turn it over to Mr. Wood, who's going to talk about our one year building and property maintenance program. So this is an awesome opportunity if you're undecided and, or maybe just looking for a, a one year course instead of the two year course. Uh, this is a, a new program that, uh, that uh, I'm, I'm ecstatic to be a part of a one year course that will allow you to uh, tone in on the skills between the three trades as well. So we, as you can see in front of you, we, we do a introduction to plumbing and plumbing lab. Uh, we have a residential wiring that you will be doing with Mr. McKenna. Uh, and there is an interior and exterior finishes and, and uh, uh, class that you'd be taking through the, the carpentry portion of it, as well as through uh, Mr. DeAngelis, the contract drawing. Again, this is a one year program that allows you uh, an opportunity to maybe work in a maintenance position uh, across the, the coverage area and different tasks. Uh, the, the campus really is, is, is your classroom in that sense. The plumbing classes, uh, for the most part, you'd typically be, be working uh, uh, with myself or one of my other instructors in the HVAC department, uh, the electrical, obviously, in the electrical portion. Um, but again, all of, all of the, the overall views, uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you have access to on our website to be able to view those uh, virtual tours of the, of the three shop areas. And career opportunities, as Bill has up, you can, you can look uh, and hone in on, on some of that 
um, just different maintenance positions, uh, maintenance helper positions. Uh, again, it's a great field uh, if you're looking for maybe just a one-year certificate rather than uh, a two-year, or maybe you already have experience in HVAC and, and electrical, but you don't have carpentry experience and, and you want to uh, hone in on that and, and earn a certificate. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you have carpentry and electrical and, and you don't have the, the, the plumbing version of it on some of the HVAC side. Of it. So again, an awesome, awesome one-year certificate program that gives you the solid foundation to be a solid maintenance mechanic. Great, thank you very much. And we so, just have a question here. Yes, Mr. D. Can I chime in on something? That of course. Mr. Wood had to say. Uh, also, too, if students are interested in uh, while they were currently taking HVAC or carpentry or electrical, that they could still, if they have time for it and it fits into their schedule, they could take an AutoCAD class or a Revit class or a cost estimating class to add to their knowledge of the construction industry, you know? Yep. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, the, the, the students in the Building Trades and Technology Division um, all have an elective to take. So a lot do elect to take uh, maybe some architectural drafting programs or, or courses or a plumbing um, and really get kind of cross-trained in the other trades. This way, this way they kind of build on that uh, well-rounded technician that our industry partners are, are looking for. Absolutely. Great point. All right, we have a question here as, as far as the total cost of the two years in each program. So our tuition, full-time tuition is the, the 17,700 as we referenced before. Uh, we will hear from our financial aid department in, in just a couple of minutes. And, and Jessica Farrell, our financial aid director is gonna talk about um, you know, how to pay and how that works when we, when we kind of hit that target. So um, stay tuned for that. Okay, does anybody else have any more questions for Mr. Wood or any of our program directors? in our building trades and technology division. Okay. All right, With well that, thank you very much, Bill. Oh, hang on, we may have we may have a question here. Let's see. Oh, that was it. Okay. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Um, again, feel free to reach out directly. Their contact information is on the screen and you will uh, have this information shared with you as well as we uh, wrap up the, the evening, um, this will be sent out. So at this time, I'd like to introduce our senior recruitment advisor, uh, Angela Semkew, who's going to talk about the enrollment process. Angela. Hi. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Bill, for the introduction. Um, so I'm just going to go through a couple of things on the enrollment side, and then um, we'll move ahead to different departments. Um, so first and foremost, I just wanted to go over um, the different academic programs that we have. All of our programs, um, we have 15 associate degree. So you would either earn your associate degree in, uh, I'm sorry, you'd earn your associate in applied science or associate in science. We also have three one-year academic certificates. Um, with all of the courses that we offer, you will have to take your general education classes um, in conjunction with your program specific. Cool thing about Johnson College though is from day one, you will be taking both of those types of classes. So it's not like you have to complete all the gen ed classes before you get into the fun ones, um, but just realize that all courses require you to take some sort of math and English, um, possibly a business class, a computer class, stuff like that, okay? Um, we have them listed on here as different divisions. Um, so we do have our building trades and technology. We have our electronic and industrial. We have our transportation and logistics, as well as our health and animal sciences. If you are interested in any of the programs that we're talking about today or any of the ones listed there, um, please realize that to do the next steps, we would encourage you to apply online at our website, johnson.edu. In the upper right-hand corner, there's the Apply Now button. Um, and with that, because of the whole pandemic going on, we realize it's a hard time for a lot of people. So all of our applications currently are free of charge. You do not need a fee waiver code and there is no um, price attached to it, okay? So once you apply, um, realize when you apply, you have to choose one major, okay? So if you're between two, that's okay, we'll work with you. You can change it at any point, but you can't come in undecided. Once you submit that online application, please contact your high school and have them send over your high school transcripts. Um, if you went and got a GED instead, we would just need the GED transcripts. Once you submit that, um, we will go ahead and um, reach out to you. We'll walk you through the next steps. 
if you are looking to do either the health or animal sciences, there are additional documents that are required, but I will reach out to you personally and we'll, we'll get them all in. Okay, we always encourage our students to come to campus to visit campus to get a feel to make sure that it's a good fit for you. Unfortunately, we can't do that at this point. Um, but you know, at once campus reopens, anybody who attended the virtual open house, I would highly recommend you come in and actually see the lab space for yourself. It's a really cool um, place. And you know, we have a lot of different buildings, a lot of different resources, a lot of different um, opportunities for our students especially when our current students are on campus, you get to you know, interact with them and get a feel for how the day-to-day -day would be. And then finally, as the last step, um, we encourage all students to fill out the FAFSA. The FAFSA is a free application for federal student aid, which Jessica is going to be talking about next. So I'm gonna pass it along to Jess. Great, Angela, thank you. Uh, real quick, so I know we have folks uh, attending today that are, are in various stages of the enrollment process. Some, this is their first time hearing about Johnson College, some uh, already deposited for the fall. So are there any questions for Angela on the enrollment process? Okay, and during the enrollment process, obviously it ties closely together with financial aid as well. So if something does pop up, feel free. But right now I'd like to introduce our Director of Financial Aid, Jessica Farrell. Jess. Hi, hey, Bill. Thanks. Hey, um, got it. <clears throat> all right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. Like Bill said, I'm the director of financial aid here at Johnson College. I'm also the veteran certifying official. So if anyone has any questions about GI eligibility or what documents you need in order to get some GI benefits, you can reach out to me directly. So tonight I'm just going to talk to you briefly about financial aid, what it is, how to apply for it. <clears throat> And then if you have any questions, please be sure to put them in the Q&A. So financial aid is funding used to assist students in paying for higher education. Uh, financial aid consists of grants, scholarships, and student loans. Um, your grants and your scholarships would be your free money, which means you wouldn't have to pay those back, and then you would have your student loans. Student loans obviously would have to be repaid, but there is a grace period that comes with those. Um, all right, so how do you apply for financial aid? You're going to start with filling out the FAFSA, like Angela had mentioned, which is the free application for federal student aid. If you are a Pennsylvania resident, you want to get this application done by May 15th. Uh, that deadline is quickly approaching, so you want to get that done as soon as possible if you plan on attending for the fall. The FAFSA can be done two ways. You can go online at fafsa.ed.gov, or you can actually download the My Student Aid app on your phone. Um, the app is very user friendly. And the nice thing about it is your parent can download the app and the student can download the app and you can be in two different areas and complete the application at the same time. So the FAFSA will get you set up with your federal and state grants and student loans. So if you wanna look into scholarships, Johnson College offers scholarships. We have about 30. We ask that each student fills out the Johnson College Scholarship application, which is found on our website. The, well, I think Bill's gonna pull it up there for you. Sorry, um, Jess. No, okay. Copy. The application consists of four questions. Um, you can submit it actually right online and it will come to me or you can email it to me. And then the college has a committee that will review your application starting in May. And we go through the entire summer until all scholarships have been awarded. We will be starting that process. We're going to do it virtually. So again, if you're starting in the fall, you want to get that application into me so that the committee could review it. Um, so on to student loans. There are two different types of student loans. You have your federal and your private, which would be your Sally Mae, PNC Bank, Wells Fargo. Once you have been accepted to the college, and you have completed your FAFSA, you're going to get a packet from the financial aid office. And in this packet, it's gonna have all sorts of information on student loans. So I'm not gonna go into too much of that tonight because there's a lot involved with that. Um, <clears throat> if you don't wanna submit a FAFSA, or if you have a balance after your grants and scholarships and don't wanna borrow any student loans, we do have payment plans available. Um, okay, Bill, if you wanna go to the next slide. Okay, so affordability. It's important when you're um, thinking about going to college 
um, you want to look at the average debt that you may, you know, you may end up having coming out of college. $37,000 is the average debt from a four-year institution. The average debt of a Johnson College student is only $5,500 to $13,000. You're looking at a student loan payment of only about $125 a month. So please keep that in mind when you are applying for schools and you are thinking about applying for financial aid. And if anybody has any questions, please let me know. And that's it. Oh, no. I just, it's Alex again in enrollment. Just bear with us one second. Um, looks like we don't have any questions for financial aid at the moment. So Jess, we do appreciate that. Uh, as soon as we get back running here, we'll jump right into our next presentation. Okay, great. So please feel free to reach out to enrollment or financial aid with any questions. And at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Jeff Bauman, our academic advisor, who's going to talk about uh, the advising process. Jeff. Hi, Bill and everyone here on our open house. It's great to see all of you in the chat area asking all these questions. Uh, my name is Jeff Bauman and I serve as academic advisor here on campus. Um, I work in our office, our student advising office, along with one other colleague, uh, the senior director of student affairs, Mr. Andy Swanch. Our role on campus is to work closely with students um, to help you while you're here. Um, if some of you have gone to other colleges, you're kind of familiar perhaps with an academic advisor, but for those students coming from high school or not having college experience, we would be like a guidance counselor of sorts to be the ones that help you keep on track. We follow your academic progress um, course by course through each semester till you graduate. Um, we help you plan for future semesters, so uh, advising period and registration times. We do have a timeline where we suggest students to come and meet with us, let us know how it's going. That first semester is always the one where students are the most nervous because they're acclimating to a new climate or they're a new place, a new system, a new process, a new professor. Um, and through that, we know what students have gone through and we've gone through it. So we kind of give you those tips and tricks to hopefully mitigate the hurdles and make your semester, first semester on campus really successful and continue on to get that career uh, that Dr. Katie and all of our program directors have talked about. Um, academic advising doesn't start as soon as you're enrolled in classes. Uh, it starts when you um, enroll with Johnson College, uh, working with the enrollment team and your application process, and you've heard about transcripts and you'll hear about that later you're put in contact with someone in the academic advising office as soon as you have questions or want to start talking about your future. And we take the time to sit down with you over the summer, uh, play in phone calls, look at the course sequence, and help you see your way to your degree. Talk about your hurdles, talk about your goals, and to help you build that pathway to your goal. We understand the investment you're making. We just heard about that from Jess, which really kind of gives you an idea of what the investment is. But we help you see the payout on your investment and have you be successful. We also connect you to resources throughout Johnson College. Uh, we're kind of that gatekeeper to help you when you're having problems with one thing or another thing. We try to re redirect you or give you the tips to get to the next place on your, um, your agenda here at Johnson. If you can go forward there, Bill, thank you. Um, we understand some students are transferring from college and they're coming after a gap year perhaps or um, you're working in the field and you want to get the credential to move yourself along in, in, in some sort of supervisor or managerial position. Um, while working uh, at college, we at, while at Johnson, we found out that most of our students work, whether it's full or part-time. So we understand that students are um, caring for themselves and their families, uh, whether they have a family of their own or they're caring for a family that they live with, that the need for flexibility exists. So we wanna talk about what it is that's driving you to be here at Johnson, what it is that you're supporting and going out outside of the classroom so we can understand what might get in the way. And then also understand that maybe choices between full and part-time scheduling would be helpful depending on your needs. Childcare, uh, work schedule, 
uh, offering of classes that may or may not fit into the need to work certain days at your job. Uh, we do ask students to really be honest with their employers and, and share, hey, I, I, this is the only time the class is offered. Can I hopefully switch my shift? Um, and we found that employers want to support their students. So you can work while going to college um, here at Johnson. And our faculty understand that. And so do we in the academic advising office. And we help you time manage. And we have other resources that you hear about today about time management and doing it all while you're in college. Another possibility to make things flexible for you, some may say, I can't go to classes before 10 a.m. because I have to put uh, my daughter on the bus at eight. Uh, we understand that, so we will work to try to find the schedule that works best for you. Uh, it may not work every day, but we will work to see what works. Um, as far as maybe you need to take an online class for English or for your math class because the times offered do not work with your schedule and the needs that you have. Perhaps you need to take all evening classes for a semester. Um, some of our programs do offer exclusive evening courses. Uh, so we have that flexibility to blend your schedule, to build it that you're here on campus minimally some days and all day other days, depending on your needs. And then finally, uh, we are a year round campus. Uh, we do offer classes in the summer and during the winter intercession. They're shortened semesters, but that allows you to take some weight off of your fall and spring semesters of your general education classes like math or art or science elective. Uh, it gives you that flexibility to maybe save some money by paying for the summer tuition rate of a $199 a credit. So if some of you are interested in coming into school this fall, we can get you enrolled in summer classes if you're interested now to get you a head start. So you just have to reach out. Um, most of our summer classes are online, so it'll be flexible. You'll be able to learn our online learning system before stepping onto campus and kind of have that foot in the water getting used to college life. So we, we offer this flexibility to give you um, some time to get your degree uh, in, a, in a time that works for you. And I've, I've mentioned transitioning to college, uh, whether it's from high school or from the non-traditional sector, you know, deciding this is what you want to do and you start a family and now you're coming to school or, you know, a career shift because you've always wanted to get involved in the trades or into the technology field because of the job um, availabilities. We understand that each student takes it differently. Uh, our office, myself and Andy, will give you open doors to the support services, tutoring, the resource center, opportunities to um, speak with our counselors, to understand and how we can work with building relationship with financial aid from when you enroll and while you're choosing classes and deciding on full or part time. We, we understand how to help you move around the college and get the best benefit for all that you're, off, you're, you're, all you're getting here at Johnson. And finally, um, one thing that you will do before you enroll, if you haven't brought in transfer credits for um, your math and English classes, you take an, uh, an AccuPlace or take a placement exam, and that tells us what level at which you need to enter in those programs. That allows us to know that you may be really ready for math because that's been your best subject, or maybe not so ready because that was the subject you struggled with. And that's okay. We take it from where you're at, we meet you, and we put you in the right courses at the right time to be successful. Um, and that's just not with placement exams. That's everything that you're going to do at Johnson. Uh, we want to take the time to meet you where you're at, hear what you're looking to do and accomplish, and get you to that level of success that you want for yourself, your family, and those who are behind you while you get your degree. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so are there any questions for Jeff for academic advising? We do have a question on here regarding an application fee that was paid a couple of weeks ago. Chris, we can certainly um, work with you on that. We'll have Alex, our assistant director of a moment, reach out just to make sure there were no issues there. And then also, I'm not sure what's to tackle this, but um, in the trade program, are pur tools purchased separately? Um, there is a tool list, a, a tool list for each program. Um, that is the responsibility of the student. Um, depending on when those tools are needed. I know our program directors can, can chime in on that or enrollment or Jeff, if you have any insight, um, but based on your specific programs that you deal with or if anybody wants to add anything. Uh, Colin McKenna again. Uh, we require all students to have basic hand tools. Any power tools or specialty tools uh, we will provide. But, uh, but if they want to work in the field, they're going to need hand tools. So we require that from day one. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, for carpentry, we basically, uh, as we go along, we kind of build it, uh, you know, start with the very basics, tape measure, 
hammer, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, as, as we go through the through the semesters, uh, we build a, a pretty good uh, pretty good toolkit, and it usually ends up being probably all said and done under two hundred dollars, probably. And that certainly varies by program, but I think, like you said, Todd and and Colin, it. It, it, as you're going through the program at Johnson over the two years, you're kind of building this this tool this toolbox and this and this toolkit so that when you are when it is time to graduate and you're ready to go out into the field, you're fully prepared. Great. And uh, and this is Walter Wood, and I just wanted to chime in with uh, I also work with a lot of uh, local companies, uh, local uh, uh, vendors that actually offer our students tool discounts when purchasing. So HVAC does have a tool list. But if you use one of the vendors and let them know that you are a Johnson College student, each one of them offers a different percentage off of the overall tool list. Again, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure of the exact price of that. I, I believe it varies based off of, uh, of the amount of the, the purchased item. Um, but again, it's just another great resource to verify that you're, you're getting the, 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 the proper tools that are gonna last a lifetime and, and, and really make you a successful technician. Great. Thanks so much. Okay. It looks like all the questions for academic advising. Jeff, I thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce our counselor and manager of disability services to talk about counseling and disability services, Emily Holmes. Emily. Thank you so much, Bill. All right, folks. Well, I, I wanted just to initially um, thank you all so much for taking the time and sticking with us um, through this virtual session. I know there's so much information that we're given, um, especially during a stressful time, but it's, it's really nice just to be able to hear questions and continue to uh, connect with folks in our community. So as Bill said, I um, am the counselor on campus and I also um, work with the Disability Services Office. Um, in addition to myself, there's another individual, John Stolen, who works in the office and we work very closely with students um, throughout their experience. You know, everything from questions right now, you know, just as a prospective student um, until even past, uh, graduation some students you know will get in touch just to let us know how we're doing so okay so as for counseling services all of the services that we offer are free and confidential we offer supportive level services meaning that we don't serve the role as primary therapist maybe someone that you could be working with for um you know touch and base with over the course of a few years summers holidays things like that um but we still see students um in, in varying capacities. Some folks, you know, may want to check in with us um, once or twice a week to let us know how things are going, let us know what may be getting in the way of them being their most successful self in classes. Other students, you know, may just pop in once or twice um, throughout the semester. Um, and others, you know, may just find us um, as the need arises. But just so that you know, we're here. Here are just some um, of the reasons that, that individuals in this little graphic here, um, that folks will come to us for support. If you're looking for something more specific, um, we also help with referrals. Um, if you know grief counseling, uh, eating disorder therapy, uh, different types of more specific um, therapies, we help with with making those connections as well. So one of the biggest reasons that students come to our office um, is for support during that college transition. Some students may be coming right out of high school, uh, but who maybe struggled with organizing the materials or studying. Some students will come and say, I really didn't do much homework in high school. That, that really didn't happen much for me. So they struggle with that in college. Other students may be coming to us, you know, 10, 20 years since they've sat in a math class and um, they just need some help getting back into the swing of things. So we help with organization skills, time management, study skills, test anxiety, um, and also just figuring out your learning style, learning what works best for you in the classroom. Um, as well as, you know, if issues come up with peers or instructors, we encourage you to talk with us so that we can help um, with that resolution. And of course, stress management, you know, we're all feeling it right now. Um, so many students have been getting in touch with us just to help with some techniques to, to lessen some of that stress. Now on to disability services. So, um, you know, myself, um, all of my contact information is on the website. So if you have really specific questions, um, 
pertaining to a disability condition or something that is a little bit more personal, um, feel free to, to get in touch with uh, me through, through the website, um, my email, phone, um, and we can certainly set up an individual Zoom call or, or phone call to go over any specifics. But generally, so students who may have had an IEP, 504 plan, um, or just a, a disability condition that they feel may impact their studies or their overall experience at Johnson College. I encourage you to come and talk with me and let me know um, so that John and I can help you throughout the process. So all that, all that we need um, is just some form of documentation. It could be a copy of that IEP. It could be um, information from uh, a licensed professional just talking about the limitations of the disability condition so that we can create your accommodation plan on campus. A few things I like to highlight is one that accommodations cannot be retroactive. Basically just a fancy way of saying your accommodations at Johnson College don't go into place until you provide us with the documentation and have met with us to create that plan. Um, we will be doing, you know, remote meetings with individuals to create plans. So we don't have to do that in person. Um, so, but I, I always tell folks, you know, even if you don't think you're going to use the accommodations, it's not a bad idea just to register with the office. You don't have to uh, use the accommodations or disclose to your instructors, but that way you're already set. We have your plans ready to go um, in the event that you need them. Sometimes folks will wait until the end of the semester when they're already struggling. Um, many times students will come and say, you know, I'm really struggling in my English or math class. I always had additional time. And unfortunately at that point, you can't retake any of the tests you've already taken. The accommodations would go into place, you know, once we've sat down, uh, you know, got, got the documentation and set up your plan. So one other thing um, I, I like to, to talk about um, during this is, is just some of the, the bigger differences between high school and college. So one of the biggest things, so um, sometimes students will ask me, you know, did my high school just transfer my IEP right to the school? In, unless that you request it and have it delivered to us, um, they don't automatically do that. And, you know, another big difference is that in college, we can't alter the fundamental nature of the courses. So um, for certain tests, um, they may have to be done in the lab versus in a, in a less distracting environment, for instance, safety exams um, or different types of tests that, that need to be taken um, in a specific location. Another thing I always like to bring up is that we also have a student pantry in our office. So if you or a classmate up here um, are, you know, it, are, are lacking any resources that you need, for, whether it's, you know, school supplies, um, grab and go food items, we can also help with transportation um, in terms of uh, we have some bus passes, uh, things like that, you know, definitely let us know. Um, you know, we tell students that early on, we know that going to college, again, especially during stressful times like this, it can be, it can be really challenging um, to make that happen. So we are here to help you um, the best that we can with the resources we have. Um, so that's just, just something to keep in mind. Thank you, Emily. Uh, are there any questions for Emily, whether on the counseling or disability services side? Like she said, her information is on here. Feel free to reach out and she could set up a separate private uh, discussion, whether through Zoom or telephone. So, all right, doesn't look like there are any questions here, Emily. So I want to thank you for your time. And with that, we're going to move on to hear from our manager of career services, Dana Healy. Dana. Hi, Bill. Thanks so much. Hey. Um, like Bill said, I'm Dana Healy, the manager of career services. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about the career services department and what we do. Um, we start with building a platform to connect our students with employers immediately. So when you first come in, we start at orientation. I talk to you then and we use all different types of communication um, to get employment opportunities out to you and to the college um, as a whole. So even when you start your first week, it's okay to come to me and sit down and say, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a part-time job. Even while you're in school, when you first start, it's okay to talk about um, your career goals. We can have career counseling sessions. Um, 
We, the college maintains a great relationship with industry. We stay in contact with them regularly, uh, daily. I talk to industry partners, different employers from all different areas. Um, internships are also a great way to market the skills you obtain in your major. So if you're in a program and there's an opportunity for internship, typically your second semester will start discussing that. And that's a great way to get you um, on your path to your career goal. Um, myself and Greg Race, who's the coordinator for Career Services, along with collaboration um, from other departments like um, Ms. Hassenbein in the Resource Center, uh, Mr. Bauman in advising, we all work closely with each other to give students the best resume, interviewing, uh, professional job searching skills possible so we can get you to your goal in a timely fashion. We hold all different kinds of um, resume workshops, uh, mock interviews, and we also have, um, you can go to the next one, Bill. Um, okay, the next one, sorry, that's the job board. So I just wanna talk a little bit about our career fairs. So we hold two career fairs, one in the spring, one in the fall, and um, they're with employers from all different areas. A lot of times students will say to me, well, what if I wanna live out of si outside of Northeastern Pennsylvania? Well, then that's where we would job search. So because we have the internet, we can search wherever you'd like to go. A lot of times students will say, um, I found this area where I really wanna live and I, I just don't know if there's jobs available there. Well, we search and we check to see what's available in that area for you. Um, I can look anywhere that you wanna go. Um, the career fairs are not open to the public. They're only for Johnson College students and alumni, which I think is very unique and special. So it's very important that you know that coming in. Um, these career fairs are not something where we're bringing in, you know, just people off the street. They're uh, strategic. We pick specific employers for you and we make it where it's just for you and alumni so you don't have to compete with anyone from outside for a career fair. Um, we have 86% placement right now. And the 14% that aren't placed are um, either choosing not to work in fields, maybe they have another job um, in a different field and they love that job. Um, sometimes they're just, you know, veteran disabled. Um, no one isn't working for any reason, but that they chose something different, which right now is a great, um, it's great to be able to say that. And our 86 placement is in field. So the 86% that are placed are not just working, they're working in the field in which they went to school for. Um, so that's kind of career services in a nutshell. So does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Dana. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any you're questions welcome. right now. Um, oh, but of course, your information is on the screen right now and will be shared with the group. Uh, definitely your office is located at the Moffitt Student Center. So definitely in a hub of activity and it's, at least come up and stop and say hi to Dana. All right, thanks Thank you, so Dana. much. All right, this time I'd like to introduce Ashley Hassenbein, our resource center or academic resource officer um, who heads up the resource center. Ashley. Thank you, Bill. I'd like to again welcome everyone uh, to our virtual open house and we're glad to uh, be able to connect with you as we're um, at home, uh, hanging out and doing what we're doing till we find out, till we find out what we're doing, I guess. Uh, again, welcome. Um, I'm Ashley Hassenbein. I am the Academic Resource Officer at Johnson College. Uh, and what we've done at Johnson College is we have reimagined uh, the physical, uh, I guess what you would say, library space. Um, like other colleges and universities have a more traditional library. We, as a technical college, have what we like to call our uh, Academic Resource Center or our Resource Center located in the Moffitt Student Center. And I'd just like to talk about um, three things to give you a little bit more information about what um, we do in the Resource Center. So first off, um, tutoring is the biggest program um, that I run through the center. Tutoring is free of charge for Johnson students. Uh, and what's cool about tutoring at Johnson College is uh, I don't always have students that have D's and F's that, that want tutoring. They don't always come because they're failing and they have no choice. I have a lot of students who come because they want a second set of eyes. Uh, they may even have a, a pretty solid grade in the class, but they just want someone to talk to. They want someone to look over an assignment. They have a math problem that they want to work out. They have a group of students that, that would like to form a study group to kind of support each other that way. Uh, signing up for tutoring is, is very simple. Uh, you sign up right on the Johnson College website. I will get um, an email with your information. I'll reach out and I'll see exactly what kind of help you need. 
there's two ways that you can receive tutoring at Johnson College. So what we have are we have walk-in hours and those hours are always posted um, inside the resource center by my desk. Um, usually the days and the times are the same. Uh, we do tutor mostly in our general education classes, our math, um, English, CPT, uh, physics. Um, but that's not to say that we don't um, have help available if you are struggling in a content area. Uh, the procedure with tutoring, talk to your instructor, pinpoint the, the area of focus, and then once you register and talk to me, I'll set you up with one of our uh, professional or peer tutors. And the really cool thing is that our professional tutors a lot of times are actually instructors at Johnson College. So it's great to um, work with an instructor that I can kind of get to know you on a, on a first name basis and has probably seen you around campus if not had you in class. Uh, we do have peer tutors, which is a, a student tutor. So if you're more comfortable meeting with uh, a peer tutor who is another student uh, at Johnson College, we can also set that up. But that usually happens more with um, a study group session, which brings me to my second point. The study spaces that we have in the Resource Center, uh, we have a private study area if you need a place where you need a little bit more quiet. Um, it's not distraction free, it is distraction reduced. You can go in, close the door. Uh, we have whiteboard on the wall. You can go in and do what you need to do. Uh, it's big enough to fit um, five or six people if need, or you can sign it out and be there on your own. We do have new furniture as of last semester, and the furniture is mobile. So you want to work in a group of one, two, three, six, twelve, whatever you need. You can take the desks and chairs, uh, piece them together wherever you want in the resource center, come in, make yourself comfortable. And that's what we try and do in our resource center. Grab a cup of coffee, grab a snack, uh, grab your buddies, uh, and come in and study. You'll also see that a lot of our faculty and staff are in the resource center too. Uh, some faculty choose to hold their office hours up there. Uh, some people choose to just meet with students and talk casually about an assignment. So you'll see that um, it's not just students, it really is um, a hub center on campus in the Moffitt Student Center. Um, as Dana mentioned, uh, Ms. Healy and Career Services before, um, I took over the presentation. Uh, we do work closely together at Johnson College and if we're not working with all um, departments, uh, you do work uh, mostly with uh, departments in the Moffitt Student Center. So with um, Nolan Renz in student engagement, Nolan and Melissa. I do work with John and Emily in, in disability and career services, Dana and Greg in career services, uh, and you will see uh, events ho hosted in the Resource Center. Dana did mention that we do industry ready resume workshops, so that might be a reason you're coming in the Resource Center. Uh, so keep your eye open for any events that, that might be held uh, in our location. As far as the actual sources, we do have a textbook textbook um, reserve section, which means uh, if you need a textbook, you forgot it, it's late, you ordered it, you don't have it for whatever reason, uh, you can check it out and use it in the library. We don't have every book, but we do have a majority of the textbooks that are being used on campus at that time. Uh, we also have um, our academic databases. So LEARN, the Library Information Resource Network is our primary database. Um, and if you're coming straight from high school or you've been in high school uh, recently, you will see that a lot of our research is on databases. And as a Johnson College student, you have free access to all of those databases and you'll find with Learn that they're all in one place, which really um, helps to streamline the research. A lot of times I'll go into classes and do presentations. If you hear the word research and databases and you think that doesn't sound like something I enjoyed in high school, I probably won't enjoy it in college. Um, I'll sit down with you uh, along with your instructors and we'll, we'll get you through it. We have some nice presentations to really streamline the process. Uh, we are tutoring uh, virtually uh, um, now for our students. Um, this is a new initiative that we've just kind of put together and it's going so well, I think we'll continue to offer it um, for the rest of the semesters at Johnson College. So if we only offer tutoring, we're open 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. If that doesn't fit in your schedule and I have a tutor that is willing to work with you and your schedules coincide, we can always tutor um, virtually uh, using a Zoom map. Uh, that's really it. Is, are there any questions for the Resource Center? Or for myself. Thank you, Ashley. Um, I don't see any coming through right now, but we'll give it another second before we move on. Um, like Ashley said, she's up in the Moffitt uh, Student Center as well. So, and her information's on the screen. If you have any questions, she's there to help. So, I hope I don't see any questions coming through. We'll move on to the next. Thank you, Thank Ashley. You. All right. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Director of Student Engagement to talk about student engagement, Mr. Nolan Renz. Nolan. Thanks, Bill. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, as Bill said, my name is Nolan Renz. I am the Director of Student Engagement. Uh, myself, along with Melissa Kirschman, who's the Coordinator of Student Engagement, um, work in, in the department um, involving a few different, few different uh, tasks that I'm gonna talk to you about tonight. So one of our first things that we, 
we plan in our department are your on and off campus events. So a lot of the get togethers on campus, you know, we do um, welcome weeks each semester. We do um, a lot of different programming. We coordinate with a lot of different departments who you've met uh, here tonight to try to offer events that, that not only are fun, but also educational that you'll get something out of. We um, try to incorporate a lot of professionalism and soft skill building into some of our programming to get, you know, help you get ready for the workforce. We do things like a tie dye cookout the first week of the semester. We do our spring day, which is our big carnival at the end of the year in spring. You know, we, we also host a number of off campus trips. We do one big off campus trip each month throughout the semester. Some of those trips have been. Uh, the Rail Riders games, Dorney Park trips, paintball, whitewater rafting, escape rooms, the uh, aquarium and the Electric City Aquarium in Scranton. We, like I said, we do one of those just about every month, and we do all of our events for our students uh, completely, completely free. They, they don't have to pay us uh, an extra dime to attend. You know, we even offer some giveaways sometimes. We try to offer food, whatever it may be. You know, and and we we cover it all. We just ask you to, you know, sign up and show up. So we try to offer a, a well-rounded, you know, offering of events for your, you know, extracurricular experience, so to speak, at Johnson. We also organize the uh, clubs that we, you know, have at Johnson. So we have a student government. We have JAG, which is our Johnson Activity Group and help. It's a group of students who help plan events for other students. We've had bingos and paint nights and um, lucky bamboos and you know different different things throughout the year that are a fun way for students to get together and you know release some stress and you know just have a good time you know we have our student ambassador group which is our our leadership development program for our students it's a program you have to apply into and get accepted and get recommendations from faculty or staff and we really try to um, build up your leadership skills and and your it's like a mentoring program uh, for our incoming students and for our, our current students as well. So we really try to offer, you know, some some additional experiences for you if you're looking to, to build up, um, you know, resume line items or or just some some more fun experience while you're at Johnson. Our department is also responsible for housing. So I know housing's come up a few times throughout the night here. I just want to give you a little bit more information on it. So our campus housing is offered solely through the Microtel Inn and Suites, which is about two blocks from our campus. It's walking distance. A lot of our students walk if they don't have cars. The rooms are all like what you would expect from a double occupancy hotel room, two queen beds, you know, housekeeping's included. They have a TV, a fridge, a microwave, daily breakfast down in the lobby. You know, um, it's, a, it's a great option to have so close to campus. We don't have traditional, you know, dorm type housing on campus, but we do offer this. It all works through us. You know, you, you go through the application process for housing. We have a dedicated staff of, of ourselves and also resident assistants or RAs, you know, who are in the hotel, you know, as a resource. They are on call 24 seven. They are trained, they host events for you to help get you to know one another. You know, there's somebody you can go to if you have questions, somebody who's looking out, somebody to help you in case of an emergency. So we offer, you know, the full housing experience that you would expect anywhere else. And, and our students really have, you know, grown to love the, the microtel. It, it's, you know, not the most traditional, you know, housing that you might think of, but it, it is really a good fit, you know, and our students really enjoy their experience there. Our department's also responsible for a couple other things. Parking, which is free to park on our campus. We uh, oversee the fitness center and the gym. We have a, a beautiful fitness center with a lot of great equipment that is, you know, available for our students to use at any time. Uh, our department's also responsible for student conduct, um, you know, but, but, you know, if you have any questions about activities or clubs or housing or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions out there for Mr. Renz on uh, 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 Mr. Renz on student engagement, um, whether campus activities, clubs, organizations, student housing? 
No? Okay. So if you do, feel free to reach out to him directly. His information is on the screen. Um, or you could always reach out to enrollment if it has to do with housing or the process uh, as far as that goes. So at this time, thank you, Nolan. I thank appreciate you. it. All right. I'd like to introduce our Associate Director of Academics, Aubrey R. Mazzani, to, to give a little overview on the Academics Department. Aubrey. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Bill, for introducing me. Um, I am Aubrey. I and I'm going to focus my part of the virtual open house on the Office of the Registrar. So one big aspect that is handled by the Office of the Registrar is transfer credits. And if you are a student who has prior education or if you're wondering if your credits will transfer to Johnson College, I encourage you to get your transcript to um, anyone in the Registrar's office or the enrollment representative that you are working with between now or any time in the summer or you know as everyone's kind of been explaining throughout this entire our virtual open house please you know don't feel any rush or or any anger if if someone can't get you a transcript right now we have plenty of time to do assessment and evaluation and we want to make sure that we do it very thoroughly so um, we usually have about a week turnaround time when we do have a transcript to evaluate and you know you met a, a whole slew of instructors throughout this entire presentation that we also Put a lot of weight into them making sure that what you had taken at a previous institution is comparable to what's offered in our curriculum so um if you have any prior learning assessment which is basically a person who was working in fields someone who may have you know, been an electrician or worked at Toby Hanna Army Duke Foat for X amount of years and really feels that they are competent in one particular subject. That's also something that Johnson College does accept or evaluate and accept if, if it works for college credit. So if you are a veteran or if you, yeah, like, you know, in, in the military, you served on a specific branch that was focused on all electronic devices, you know, we can always take that into consideration. So definitely something to um, bring to our attention or bring to your enrollment uh, attention. And like I said, we have up until the Friday of the first week of school, and that's all the way in August. And, you know, we have plenty of time to, to review all that information. And the last thing just to kind of go over is articulation agreements. So if you are a student who is looking to come to Johnson College and get a two-year associate's degree, and then particularly looking to focus on maybe getting a bachelor's degree or furthering your education, we do have articulation agreements, two with local colleges, one with Keystone College and one with Marywood University. And then we also have a very interesting articulation agreement with St. Matthews, which is very down south, I think actually off the coast, part of the, the Caribbean, which is focused on our vet tech major so if you have any questions or anything about furthering your education the registrar's office would definitely be another place to to go to and we're located in richmond hall and we are part of the office of academics so that's really it for for me <laughs> great thank you aubrey does anybody have any questions for academics or the registrar's office transfer credits prior learning i know we answered some of those a little bit early on so uh thank you for that all right aubrey well thank you um Thanks. With that, I'd like to move on to uh, Alex and Angela. Alex is again our Assistant Director of Enrollment and Angela, our Senior Recruitment Advisor, to kind of wrap things up from the enrollment side um, and finish off the evening. Alex, Angela. Thanks, Bill. So I just wanted to really quickly recap. Um, if you liked what you heard today, if you are ready to take the next steps and you have not already applied online, please do so at johnson.edu. And then the, after that, uh, we are looking for your high school or GED transcripts. Now, you do not have to submit any uh, prior college transcripts, but as Aubrey just mentioned, you do have the potential to get transfer credits. And if you're awarded them, you don't have to retake the class. So we always highly recommend that you do submit those. Um, the third step would be to complete the FAFSA. As Jessica said, that is the um, free application for a federal student aid. It, it would provide you the opportunity for po possibly grants and or loans. Um, some important dates coming up would be our fall 2020 semester, which is the next semester starting, starts on August 31st, which is a Monday. And our open house, our on-campus open house, um, should be on Wednesday, July 15th. Um, we do have additional virtual open houses coming up. We have two additional ones. Next Tuesday, the 21st, is going to be focusing on our transportation and logistics, as well as the following Wednesday, April 29th, is going to be um, focused on our health and animal sciences. 
both of them you could register in the same place that you did for tonight. Um, like I said, if you're interested in any other programs, um, the setup is going to be the same. So if you wanted to just come here with the program directors have to say, then you could easily leave the meeting. You don't have to sit through the whole portion again. Um, but you know, if you have any additional questions about anything you saw today, anything that we didn't speak about, then please feel free to ask them now, or you could reach out to any of the departments. So do we have any questions? Thank you, Angela. Um, it doesn't look like any questions are coming in right now. We'll give it another couple of seconds. Uh, and again, just want to remind everybody that all of the information from our panelists today, as well as program directors, are included in the webinar presentation that will be sent out to you shortly after we conclude. Um, feel free. We pride ourselves on being a hands-on school, but we're also face-to-face -face, even in the time of uh, uh, the, the isolation, social distancing period we're in. So feel free. We're just a phone call, email away, and we could easily hop on a call and, and help you out. So with that said, I certainly want to thank you for your time spending it with us here this evening. We encourage you all to stay safe and Please feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you.